George Bush's, uh, baby Bush's dealings with Haiti. It's, he's, he's a fucking Hitler. George W. Bush, baby Bush is Haiti's 21st century Napoleon. Uh, Bush was able to, excuse me, was able to do something that uh, Napoleon couldn't do, and that was wipe out the government, install a different government. Napoleon couldn't do that. Uh, so, you know, in some respects, this uh, new world order, this empire that's being established, Baby Bush is setting it up. It was just Iraq, but it was so much more than just Iraq. It was America's and That's what he thought of him. And he says that his record on race relations should be enough to convince anyone of his concern for minorities. Chandler, a two-time U.S. senator, pointed out to his 1947 uh, decision. So this is 1988. And he's like, I'm not a racist. 41 years ago, you know, I, I let Jackie Robinson play in the major leagues to um, help him break the color barrier. And he's like, I don't reckon there's anybody in this lifetime has made any greater contribution to race relations and good feelings between black and white people than your humble servant. And I think the record will show that. Chandler said at a news conference. So I guess Chandler saying that he's actually been good for race relations. Um, the remark that touched off the fur, uh, the fur, 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 like mon, like fucking Hitler, fur, nah, fur like hatred. Um, it was made Tuesday when Chandler was attending an investments committee meeting of the United, uh, the University of Kentucky Board of Trustees. He says, you know, Zimbabwe is all nigger now. There aren't any whites. The comment prompted a storm of protests, including the football team's action. And uh, the team's spokesman, Dave Anderson, a, or Dave Johnson, a defensive back from Louisville, says, he doesn't realize that this is the 80s. This is 1988. We don't like to be called that anymore. The Patriot Act is whack. Wisconsin got charred and fucked hard. Now none of their motherfucking unions can strike. That ain't right. What's the point, bitch? Evidently, Americans love being stripped of their motherfucking rights. The coverage of the 2000 Wall Street protests has been grotesque. Yet we see international strife on our news the best. There's Egypt and Algeria, Yemen, Morocco and Syria, Moldova and Tunisia. Then you got Jordan and Iraq. Every dimension of Kentucky life. Literacy is everywhere in Kentucky, okay? People need to be told what's going on. Someone needs to be looking through the information and telling them the important stuff. The media is not telling you the important stuff, and we know that. We're also pissed. We understand what's going on. There's also a lot of, uh, you know, uncertainty in the air. It's a new world. There is going to be a new world order. It's going to be one of freedom and revolution and democracy and solidarity and unity. Blossom grows in all the millions in millions of stars. It is enough to make him happy to, to look at the stars. He can say to himself somewhere, my flower is up there. But if the sheep eats the flower at one moment, all his stars will be darkened. And you think that is not important. I like that line. I'm going to repeat it. If someone loves a flower of which just one single blossom grows in all the millions and millions of stars, it is enough to make him happy just to look at the stars. And he can say to himself somewhere, my flower is there. But if the sheep eats the flower in one moment, all the stars will be darkened. And you think face their own consciousness? Can they not see that American culture is rotting away? Our honesty, our human sympathy, our literature save what we import from abroad. Our only renew review of literature has wisely dropped literature from its name. Our manners are gone, and the one thing we many people died, so the specific incidents are uh, written out there. So the mother watched, you know, two sons, one of them die in a fire, and then one of them gets shot. Uh, and there's other stories like that, too, which I guess would be a, g a good ending if I <laughs> had those stories. Um, but, yeah, those stories are pretty bad. The, uh, I mean, it was, was an anti-foreign riot. 
So just like the Mexicans, I think that that's how they were treated. Germans coming here speaking a different language. They had their own culture. They stayed off to themselves. Uh, they had a different religion. They had different, uh, you know, ethics and morals. They're all Christians, right? All of them are supposedly Christians, um, which is crazy how Christians seem to uh, want to attack other people who don't believe or look like them or talk like them. You know, Christians, right? Uh, the, the Protestants. The Protestants are, do not have a clean record. When it's well, at least they had hats. Goals by grade level, by class area, of the standards that we're going to teach the kids so that there's a common agreement of what we're teaching. What we're teaching in classroom A is going to be the same material as taught in classroom B. That way when a student moves from one school to another, they're getting the same instruction at the same grade level. Um, and the next step... Uh, Politician, so of course he wants to be a stealer. Rand Paul's Long shot bullshit bullshitting campaign shows that Ashton Judd can win Kentucky. Rand Paul bullshit lied his way into Kentucky. Um, a latter part of his life, he was an outsider for the most of his life. So, Rand Paul, you're mostly a Kentuckian. You're mostly an outsider. You're not Kentuckian. You only got two fifths of a single generation of Pauls in Kentucky. Judd's roots goes back ten generations deep into the Appalachian Mountains. You just got the blade of a bluegrass. She's deep inside the mountains. You got the roots of a blade of bluegrass. <clears throat> and there's no telling how many Green Mountain boys fall in love with Ashley Judd as soon as they see her. So, Rand Paul, Miss McConnell, Jesse Bitten, Carl Rove, all you fuckers are just fucking with Ashley Judd because you know that she can whoop your all's asses and you know that you're vulnerable and you showed your ass you showed that you're vulnerable and you're weak so hopefully this actually garner, garners more sympathy for her and hopefully she waits several months before deciding to actually jump into uh other ring actually joe would be a wonderful senator and i hope she runs i hope she does i suppose that's the gentlest way to put it Good night. <laughs> he actually have a better fighting chance at a civil war. Some people say that he actually just postponed the inevitable. There's going to be a war anyways, but instead he, uh, you know, uh, brokered a peace for a short amount of time, 1850. So for 15 years, Missouri Compromise uh, brokered a peace as long as black people were treated as non-humans. Um. And if people want to say, like, Missouri is the South, like, why the fuck is Missouri going to be a slave state? You don't talk about South. Missouri technically reaches farther north than Kentucky, farther north than Virginia. So Missouri, y'all was north. Y'all was above the Mason-Dixon line. And y'all still going to be South anyways. And that's just like Indiana, Illinois, Ohio. They're just uh, the, the southern states of the north. Malcolm X said, quit talking about the South as long as you're south of the Canadian border, you're south. The most racism MLK experienced, he said, was in the northern cities. Of truth. Um, ask about the few gates of Kentucky. They got blue skin. And uh, find out why they got blue skin. That, uh, that, that, would find, that would be the reason why you have half these jokes um, that was listed here. So, yeah. Kentucky jokes, Johnny Masters. Yeah, fuck the Wildcats. I like that. Fuck the Wildcats. I'm Louisville here, and Wildcat, loving Wildcats. Teach is own the fan or the the players. I'm sure are good, but the fans are fucking dickheads. Wildcats fans, you guys are dicks. And it's like a religion here in Kentucky. You know, it's the Bible Belt, but the number one religion is Wildcats. And I went to U of L. I'm a Cardinal. I love all things Kentucky, but fuck the Wildcats. <laughs> fuck the Wildcat fans. You guys are assholes. Big ticket items from the school, including ATVs and a couple of lawnmowers. 
A Louisville man is sent to the hospital with a broken nose and two black eyes that he says he got from Metro police officers. WDRB Stefan Johnson explains why the man injured is the one now facing charges, Stefan. Well, Jennifer, both sides agreed this started with a verbal confrontation and quickly turned violent. But you might be surprised at who threw the first punch. Robs and Les Miserables. And um, the woman that's on the front, the girl that's on the front, she's eight-year-old Cosette uh, with her hair blowing out to the side. So eight-year-old Cosette, she was a child slave. So this, you know, the story is centered around, centered around the times in Paris, France at the time. Uh, but Cosette was an eight-year-old girl. So she was a slave to a cruel and fierce master. So Cosette uh, is in pop culture. Hush a bye baby, just a song. Hush a bye baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bell breaks, the cradle will fall and down will come baby. Army was killed in the battle. Ward himself survived. In 1792, he fought in a skirmish with the party of Kentucky militia that included his brother. A year later, he was mortally wounded in a clash where another brother fought on the opposing side. So the uh, Civil War was known as brother versus brother, but really the, uh, um, the, uh, the Revolutionary War was brother versus brother, especially on the frontier end, on the side where they was fighting against the Indians, where there were uh, the... <laughs> When he popped out of the car, when he jumped out of the car, that was on. He stopped the car right in the middle of the road, and he opened the door, and he says, you know, here we go. This is it. He stops the car in the middle of the road. In the middle of the road, you know, in the middle of the road. It's, it's four lanes. There's parking lanes, but there's it's 4th Street. So he stops in the middle of 4th Street, all catty-cornered, blocking my path, and he jumps right out in front of me. There's just no way, there's no way possible to know who or what his business was. And it wasn't professional. Hey yo man, what the hell are you doing? I want you to I just want to talk shit. I want you to talk shit. Don't shit on homie. Yo, let me see it. Let me see what you have, bro. Come on. Cardinal in the tree. Looks pretty. I don't know if it's gonna let me cash right now. <laughs> you fucker. appeared in the doorway and stood there looking in, his big shoulders nearly filling the opening. For a moment, Crooks did not see him, but on raising his eyes, he stiffened and a scowl came across his face. His hand came out from under his shirt. Lenny smiled helplessly and in a t he lifted one hand from the controls and slipping his arm around her, began to fondle her breast. Thank Ford, she said to herself. He's all right again. <laughs> Uh, thank Ford, which is like, thank God, thank Ford. I think it might be Henry Ford, too. And, um, this is, Henry was talking about, maybe we should just be monogamous. Oh, thank, quit, quit talking crazy. I think it might be Bernard, actually. Page 93, coming up.